Hey guys, my name is CJ, this is Jumpstart Hobbies, and today we're going to talk about the top 9 tools for miniature painting beginners. Instead of building the absolute cheapest set possible, I've decided to show you what I would buy if I was starting again as a beginner. I'll be breaking this down into three levels, starting with level 1, entry level equipment. First item on our list is miniature paint, and instead of recommending the cheapest apple barrel paint that you'll be fighting with as a newbie like I did, I'd like to recommend the highest quality, best value set I can think of, and that's the Vallejo Intro Set. It's got every paint you need to paint an army of miniatures in any scheme you want. It's even got metallics. Next, we're going to talk about washes. These are high viscosity paints that flow into recesses and give you shadow effects with little effort. Many brands have their own washes under different names, but Army Painter makes a set called Quick Shades that works great and covers most situations. If you're only going to buy a few, I recommend buying the Strong Tone, Dark Tone, and Flesh Wash. Pro tip, use water bottle lids so they hold your washes and they don't spread around. Okay, third on our list we've got brushes, and while high quality brushes are nice to have and make the fine detail work easier, I recommend new painters start out with a cheap set of brushes. This is because those cheap brushes work nearly as good as the high quality brushes, but you're not going to kill your wallet while you're learning how to paint without destroying them. Pro tip, don't leave your paint brushes in a cup of water. This bends the bristles. And don't jab your paint brushes into piles of paint. This will push paint into the metal part known as the ferrule where it will dry and cause your bristles to split instead of coming to a point. And now the last pro tip for your brushes, if this wasn't obvious, don't leave paint to dry on your brushes. Now fourth on our list is the funnest item for many of you to choose and that's going to be your miniature figures that we're going to be painting. Now many companies make different styles and qualities of miniatures. You can find board games, modeling kits, or even some tabletop role playing games to find good figures to practice on. I would recommend using larger figures such as some D&D monsters so you can learn how to use your tools without having to paint microscopic details. Now fifth on our list is a palette which we'll need for holding and mixing our paint. And although a paper plate would do, acrylic is known for its fast drying time and our thinned miniature paints will dry even faster in such small quantities. So to combat this, I recommend using a wet palette. This uses a sponge and water to keep your mixing surface and your paints wet for multiple days if needed. Speaking of wet, next on our list is number six and that's water cups. You'll need a container to hold the water for washing your brushes. I recommend a coffee mug because they're heavy and less prone to tipping over, but if you're feeling fancy, companies make cups specifically for this job. Pro tip, use two cups, one for standard paints and another for your metallics. You don't want to get metal flakes in your standard cleaning water. Now, number seven on our list is lighting. Painting in a well-lit area is critical for being able to properly see our colors. If you have space under a direct light source, such as a bright lamp or a window, that's great. If not, you can find a cost-effective daylight desk lamp for a reasonable price online. Now eighth on our list is primer, and before you start applying paint to plastic little toys, you need to make sure that paint can adhere to the surface. Apply a primer to the miniatures to create a smooth painting surface and to improve paint adhesion. Miniature brands make bottled primer and spray primer, but when you're just starting out, I recommend Rust-Oleum's 2X Paint and Primer to quickly and cheaply get the job done. Now last on our list and last in the process is our clear coat. Now when you finally get your favorite miniature painted in the perfect color scheme, it's time to protect all your hard work with a layer of varnish. Again, miniature painting companies make their own varnishes that you can spray or brush on, but for quick and easy protection, I recommend Rust-Oleum's clear coat spray. And those are the nine tools for your your entry level miniature painting setup. Next we'll go over level two, expanding your toolkit. Now the first item on this list is more paint. Now the Vallejo paints from level one were already great, so here's an even larger set. While personal preferences of certain paint qualities might favor other brands, I recommend Vallejo or Pro Acryl. Some enjoy Scale 75, Citadel, or even artist grade traditional acrylics. As you gain more experience, you'll find out which paint qualities matter the most to you. Now you might be asking yourself, what do I do with all this paint that I've acquired? Well, number two on our list is paint racks. Keeping your paint collection organized is great for knowing exactly where your favorite colors are. Just like any other hobby, eventually the supply amount will grow so large that you can't find that goblin green that you like so much. Now the solution to that, for most miniature painters, is to store your paint collection in an MDF laser cut or acrylic storage rack. Some prefer the rising steps of paint, some prefer the vertical racks that are meant for nail polish, choose the one you like the most. The third item in this level 
is more minis, specifically high quality miniatures. And there's no other industry standard than that of Games Workshop. Their genres include their own IP of fantasy and sci-fi miniatures, and even a Lord of the Rings line. So whether you like Red Loving Orcs, Giant Space Marines, or Frodo in the Ring, they've got some miniatures for you. You can also find companies that make a resin kit display miniatures or a large scale bust to paint. And once you've learned how not to jam your brushes into armor plates or get them stuck in puddles of super glue, it's time for number four on our list and that's higher quality brushes. Now a hair type known as Kalinsky Sable is the top material choice for miniature painters. They're marketed as watercolor brushes and work for us because of our highly thinned paint mixtures. Now you can find some unknown budget brushes online, but if you're looking for the name brand, higher quality but yet higher price brushes, look for stuff like Rosemary & Co, Da Vinci, Winsor & Newton, or Artist Opus. Those are great beloved choices in the industry. And my general recommendation is that you start with a number two if you're gonna purchase a premium brush. This will have most of your general use cases covered and if you really need a size one or zero, those are other popular sizes, but having a fine point is what really matters and not the number on the brush. Now number five on this list is better lighting. And once you're good enough to realize how important lighting is in the painting world, it might be time to upgrade to a more professional desk light. A nice adjustable desk lamp such as this are very popular in the miniature painting world. Now the last thing on this level is gadgets. I'm grouping a list of items into this category. These are just nice to have items that just make the hobby more efficient and easier. We've got magnification. This helps you see and paint the intricate details with greater precision. Some prefer the goggle style and others prefer the table mounted magnification like this. Then we've got the hobby knife and files. These are good for cleaning up mold lines and refining rougher surfaces. Then we've got sprue cutters which cut the miniatures from the sprue and remove flash. Now then we have painting handles. Now you can use a wooden dowel and some poster putty to get this job done, but miniature brands also make their own handles for this job. A self-healing cutting mat is another nice thing to have for all of our cutting activities in the hobby. Now if you've been improving your painting skills and you really want to take your miniatures to the next level, you should work on your basing materials. Now having bags of dirt, rocks, even fake leaves and plants can really up your game and drastically improve the looks of your miniatures. Companies like Army Painter make full sets like this. And the last gadget I'm gonna talk about is brush soap. This might not sound like a gadget, but it's very important to keep your brush tips pointed and your brushes in like new condition. And that's the end of level two, expanding your toolkit. Now we'll talk about level three, professional tools. Now these aren't tools that you need to be a professional, but many pros do use these tools. Now the first item we're gonna talk about in our level three is an airbrush system. Now some reasons you might want to buy an airbrush are for being able to prime your miniatures indoors, it gives you some smooth base coats, some gradients, and really advanced smooth blending techniques. Now your base components are gonna be your airbrush, your hose, and your compressor. The Iwata Eclipse is the go-to airbrush for most miniature painters, but once you're focused on airbrushing, you might consider upgrading to the Harder and Steenbeck Infinity. Now next we'll look at some accessories for our airbrush. The first of which are airbrush specific paints that don't need any additives or thinners and they can be sprayed right out of the bottle. One of the biggest advantages to having an airbrush is being able to prime your minis inside. And some industry favorites for this task are Vallejo and Steinol Res. And then you've got your airbrush thinner, flow improver, and cleaner. I generally recommend the Vallejo brand for all of those, but many manufacturers make them. And next, if you're gonna be spraying a lot indoors, a great thing to have is an airbrush booth, which is gonna give you a dedicated space to spray and built-in ventilation. For spraying dangerous paints and avoiding metallic particles in the air, a respirator mask is a good safety practice when airbrushing. And lastly, for the airbrush, whether you're new or experienced at airbrushing, having a cleaning kit is great for cleaning out clogged airbrushes and spraying unused paint between colors. Next, we're gonna talk about the Vortex Paint Mixer. Now this vibrates your bottles at a rapid speed and helps ensure a proper mixture. And I've heard this described as saving you literal seconds from your arm doing it. But seriously, it is nice to have if your paints are 
separating inside your bottles or don't have a mixing ball built inside. Now fourth on this list is weathering and special effects. Test out weathering powders, pigments, and special effects paints to add realistic textures and weathering patterns to your miniatures. Applying fake blood, slime, or realistic water can really take your minis to the next level. Okay, and the last item I've got on my list today is a 3D printer. And whether you're looking at large scale terrain for an FDM printer or extreme detailed minis of a resin printer, 3D printing unlocks a new world for hobbyists and creators. And that sums up our level three and our video as a whole. Now I did today's video as a buyer's guide and less of a tutorial, but if you have any specifics that you would like detailed instructions, leave it in the comments below and I'll have that for future reference of videos. Now if you like this content today, please like and subscribe to the video, it really helps my channel grow. In the description I've got the affiliate links for all of the items that I've talked about in today's video. And if you use the links, you support the channel at no extra cost to you. Until next time, see y'all later.